Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you. Let your truth fill our hearts. We yield ourselves to obey every instruction from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, we're, we're still in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. This is deep. Praise God. And, and, and like I say, look, ask your questions. Send it in. We'll deal with it. Praise God. Now then, we're in verse verse 12 yesterday and he says i want you to notice he says but to the rest speak i not the lord you knows what i'm about to say now it's not a commandment from the lord it's me telling you my own opinion now when he says that it doesn't mean it is right for example you know you you need to get and it doesn't mean it's wrong either he when paul says this he's actually just telling you that i have not gotten a clear wisdom from God concerning this but for peace sake this is what I suggest and that's what he's saying so he says let the one who if you, if you got married and your wife was not born again or both of you were not born again and one person get born, gets born again it doesn't mean you should just throw your wife away so now that you're a believer your wife is an unbeliever you know sometimes for example people marry from different religions say okay I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian I got married to a Muslim okay now what, what's going to happen should I put away my wife <coughs> No, not necessarily. So that's what the scripture says. But then he said something. Said, if the woman is pleased to dwell with you, see, if the woman is pleased to dwell with you, not us, if, if she says, okay, like I said yesterday, if a man gets born again or a woman gets born again and it's in this marriage relationship, the power of the Holy Ghost in your life should add flavor to your marriage in such a way that your partner will not want to leave. I mean, your being born again shouldn't be you coming and saying, no, now I'm holy and sanctimonious, so don't touch me, don't touch me. And before we do anything, let us pray first. And person will be looking at you, what has come over you? But you see, if Christ is now in your life, the person is supposed to look at you and say, come, what's making you excited now? What's making you happy? You know how someone is excited that you're excited and then they don't really know why you're excited? Like, you know, I, I like this new you, but I, I want to understand what's going on. Is there someone outside there? Oh, yes, there's someone outside there, but the truth is the person is not outside there. The person is right inside here. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. <clears throat> someone else is making you excited. And guess what? He's not just making you excited. He's making you excited to get hold of your spouse also. To get the, the same excitement. Say, man, I wish you would understand what I'm experiencing right now. You need to. So, so you don't get born again and then there's now automatic friction. Except you're married to the devil or the child of the devil. Now, in that case, there is nothing you, you can do about it. See? So, he says, if she's pleased to dwell... Let us stay. Then it says, verse 13, <clears throat> verse 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13. And the woman which had an husband that believed not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Vice versa now. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband now this in itself is not entirely correct now why do i say that because i've received the wisdom of god consigning this now he said let me read this from let's see now thank you lord jesus Now it says, the Amplified Version, Amplified Classic. Now. It says, For the unbelieving husband is set apart, separated, withdrawn from hidden contamination, and affiliated with the Christian people by union with his consecrated, set-apart wife. And the unbelieving wife is set apart and separated through union 
with her consecrated husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, unblessed, hidden outside the Christian covenant. But as it is, they are prepared for God's pure, for God pure and clean. Hmm. Now, if you've listened to my message on the godly seed, you would you would understand why I say this is not entirely correct. Now, <clears throat> you look at this scripture and it's standing alone throughout the scripture. Now, that's why, first of all, Paul said, these are my thoughts. Like I said, when he says, these are my thoughts, he's saying, I have not received the wisdom of God concerning it. But when you compare this statement with other testimonies from, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you realize that it, it, doesn't, it doesn't flow. Do you understand? It doesn't flow. See, when, when, when it says unbelieving wife marries an unbelieving husband, you need to first of all determine this unbelieving wife, is it a godly seed that is not born again yet? Or is it an ungodly seed that will never get born again? See, when it's an ungodly seed that will never get born again, the husband cannot sancti sancti sanctify her, nor can the wife sanctify him. It, it won't work. Now, that's not what we're talking about today. I'm just trying to let you know that this is not the word of the Lord, that he spoke in this place. Praise God. All right, so, <clears throat> now he says, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God had called us unto peace. So you now want to ask the question, so in that case, can the person remarry? Can the person remarry a believing brother or a believing sister? If someone marries an unbeliever, and the person says, now nah, this is your Christian thing, I cannot take it, please, I'm, I'm going away. Now if the person leaves because you are a Christian, not because she complained that since you became a Christian, you stopped taking care of us in the house. Now that is not right. Say, now since he, he got born again, he's always sleeping in church. He doesn't come home. He just comes home in the morning, changes. He says, having all night, seven days all night for the last three months. <clears throat> what are you doing all night for? Yeah, I'm cleansing myself from every evil that I have done. All the money, all his salary, he gives it to church. He doesn't spend money. When, when I try to ask him, he say, God, God will take care of us. God will take care of us. And I don't see God taking care of us. We are starving. We are, I have to beg to get food. And, and, and a woman suffering like that and says, you know what? If this is your Christian thing that has come in between us, I don't think I can handle it. Now, that's, that is a brother who was foolish where his family is concerned. <clears throat> You see, God will hold you responsible if you don't take care of your family. Actually, the Bible says you are worse than an infidel. You are worse than an unbeliever if you neglect the responsibility of taking care of your family. He says you are worse than an infidel. You must take care of your family. First, God will require that from you. And let me tell you something. God is not going to ask you to give as an offering the, the school fees you're supposed to pay for your family. He wouldn't do that. Jesus actually said this in Matthew, in the book of Matthew. Jesus said, look, it is wrong. You know, he, 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 was, he was reprimanding the Jews and the Pharisees. He said, you guys say it's okay. When a man says, what I would have given to my parents, <coughs> I have given it to God. See, he says, you make the word of God of none effect by your stupid tradition. So Jesus said, that's not right. What belongs, you, you don't say because of God you neglect your family. It is not God, that is religion. And you're being led astray. Can God command me to give to him instead of taking care of my family? In certain circumstances, God may do that. But there is, this is the proof <clears throat> that God is telling you to do that. When you do that, he would rise up immediately to take care of your family. For example, let's say you, 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 you save money to pay your children's school fees, right? And then before it's time to pay the school fees, the word of the Lord comes to you. And God says, look, that money you've saved up, I want you to give it to me. Now you know you had God. I'm not talking about you went to a church and then the pastor preached a wonderful message. And you say, ah, I don't have money to sow seed. The only money I have is my children's school fees. Let me go and use it to test God. 
Number one, you're acting irresponsibly. Yes, that's exactly what you're doing. But then you see, God may command you. You know this is not the pastor. This is not anybody. You heard the voice of God. I'm not talking about somebody standing and saying, Brethren, hmm, the money I saved for my children's school, I went to sow it as a seed. Ah, two days later, God surprised me. He said, eh, ah, I'm going to carry my children's school fees to sow too. Ah, eh, 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 eh. You, you didn't ask the person what exactly motivated you to do that. You find out. See, if there's an instant miracle, then you know God spoke. Now, why would God tell you to sow your children's school fees? Possibly because your trust is in that saving and he wants to dismantle it. But I'll tell you something that you will notice. If God tells you to sow your children's school fees, trust me, before the school resumes, he will repay you. Now, how will he repay? Either somebody will show up and say, you know what? I, I, I just heard the Lord tell me that from henceforth, I should take the responsibility of paying your children's school fees till they finish their school. Like, really? Now, you will see how foolish it was for you to be saving up money and putting your trust god is not against you having savings but he's against you putting your trust in your savings oh now we have this money saved up ah, our children are secured for the rest of their schooling false they are not secured for the rest of their schooling they are not not because you have saved money there no they are secured because god is the one who secures them. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. How did we get here now? Let me read from verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving man depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace god has called us to peace so not the day you get born again and say ah my wife is an unbeliever so i have to divorce her and church and i say okay we have wife for you no sir god has called us to peace stay in it until it is obvious that you guys cannot stay together see until it's obvious and when i mean it's obvious it's confirmed by the lord and in such a case one person will leave the, the unbelieving person will wake up and leave. Now he says, when that happens, you are not under bondage. You see, one can choose to remarry. But he said, don't just rush at that. The husband and wife now hearing say, ah, I've seen the secrets. I know how to di divorce my wife now. How? I'll just go and phone born again. And, and she will run away. <laughs> Praise God. Now he said, God has called us to peace. So your heart must be sincere before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For what knowest thou O wife whether thou shalt save thy husband you see or knowest how or how knowest thou O man whether thou shalt save thy wife but <clears throat> but as god had distributed to every man as the lord had called everyone so let him walk and so ordain i in all churches if any man called being circumcised let him not become uncircumcised you can't even become uncircumcised praise god if any man called uncircumcision let him not be circumcised circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandment of god let every man abide in the same calling wherein he is called praise god now let's just read it have thou called being a servant care not for it but if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. You see that? For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Now, I want to stop here. Now, what's this saying? Anywhere God has called you. See, he says, for example, if you're a slave, if you're a servant, and then you, you get born again, and you don't say, oh, my, 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 my boss is a non-believer. I cannot remain here. Same thing he talked about Mary. Same thing. I cannot remain here. But he says, if you have the option of freedom, take it actually. Yeah. But you see, if, if for that moment, you know that, oh, what I'm being paid here, I would need it. You know, then stay. Possibly you're going to be the light in that place. That's what God would rather you do. 
But when it's an environment that your light cannot shine, you know it that the place is too dark, your light cannot shine. You have the option of leaving, then he says, take that, uh, take that freedom to leave. Praise God. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bless today. Let your wisdom carry us through this day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.